As scuba divers, we all know the number one rule, never hold your breath. But did you know as a rebreather diver, there's another number one rule. Always know what your PO2 is at all times, your partial pressure of oxygen. What the heck is partial pressure of oxygen? Why is it important to even know that? What if I don't dive on a rebreather and I'm just an open circuit regular diver? Do I need to know my PO2? Well, yeah. Depending on what type of gas you're going to dive with, you will need to know what your PO2 is. Today, we're gonna to talk all about enriched air nitrox. Welcome to Everything Scuba. When diving on a rebreather, you're essentially wearing a nitrox making machine on your back. But do you have to be a rebreather diver to use nitrox? And the answer is absolutely not. There are many recreational open circuit divers who use enriched air nitrox. We thought this would be a great place to insert this into a rebreather series. It also applies to open circuit recreational divers who use nitrox. What the heck is nitrox? Why would I wanna use it in the first place? What are the benefits? What does it do for me as a diver? What are the risks involved in using nitrox? And most importantly, how do I avoid the risks involved in using nitrox? Lastly, who can use nitrox as certified divers? Welcome to Everything Scuba. I am Lyle, and if you're a first time viewer to our channel, welcome, we are glad you're here. Uh, we are here talking about, well, everything related to the sport that we love, and we hope you love it too. If you love to scuba dive, dive into everything scuba. Most open water divers start their training with air in their cylinder. And I've got three cylinders drawn on the board here. You'll have to uh, excuse my lack of artistic abilities. This is the best I can do. Um, air is a gas that is made up of primarily oxygen and nitrogen. There's some trace gases in there, but for our purposes, we're gonna eliminate those. So air is 21% oxygen and 79% nitrogen. That is the mix of gas that we breathe. Nitrox, what is nitrox? Enriched air nitrox is a gas with a higher oxygen content. And that higher oxygen content could be anywhere from anything over 21%, but for recreational divers, anything 40% or below. And so two of the most common mixes that you'll run across are nitrox one and nitrox two. You might see enriched air nitrox written as E-A-N-X and then the 32 or 36 or whatever the percentage of oxygen concentration is written after that. So in these two instances, enriched air nitrox 32 has 32% oxygen in the cylinder and 68% nitrogen. Enriched air nitrox 36, 36% oxygen and 64% nitrogen. Before we go any further, let's review a few basic principles that you learned in your open water class. Let's talk about pressure and depth changes. If we have diagrammatically laid out here, zero foot at the surface, we're under absolute pressure, which is measured in atmospheres or ATA or bar. As we descend in the water column, for every 10 meters or 33 feet, we add one additional atmosphere of pressure to our bodies. And so at the surface, we're at one, at 33 feet or in 10 meters, two, and so on and so forth. As recreational divers, we're generally never gonna get below 132 feet, and that would be a maximum of five atmospheres of pressure. What we do know is with increasing depth, we increase the pressure that is we're under, and what we also know is that with increasing pressure, this increases the solubility of the gases that we breathe, meaning those gases will come out of, they will dissolve into our bloodstream when we inhale them, and they will then be absorbed into the tissues of our body. And so this is known as Henry's Law. Whoever Mr. Henry was, he figured out that by increasing pressure on a gas, you increase its solubility. So as we dive deeper and deeper, what happens to the two gases, oxygen and nitrogen, within our body as we dive? The oxygen. This is a little bit of an oversimplification, but we metabolize a portion of that gas that we inhale. We actually exhale more of the oxygen than our body would require 
to metabolize. So if we're drive, diving open circuit, there's gonna be bubbles that come out, and so we're actually wasting some of that oxygen out of our cylinder. On a rebreather, you breathe out into the loop, and that gets recirculated back to you. So it's a little bit more of an efficient way to dive. The nitrogen, we do not metabolize. Uh, and so what happens is, by Henry's law, as we increase in depth, the molecule is going to become more soluble, meaning it dissolves more easily uh, out of solution. And so it enters our bloodstream when we inhale it, and then it gets pushed out into our tissues, and we start to load up with nitrogen gas within our tissues. When you're first learning to dive, taking your first open water classes, your instructor probably exposed you to this scary looking table. This is called the Recreational Dive Planner, or RDP. Uh, it looks scary, but it's actually a very simple instrument. But what it tells us is along the top we have depth. So if I dive to 50 meters and I dive for 27 minutes, then it gives me a pressure group. That tells me how much nitrogen has loaded into my system uh, after that length of dive. Along the bottom, we have these black boxes also with numbers in minutes in them. And these black boxes represent right here are no decompression limit. As recreational divers, we should never get to a point during a dive where we have to do what we consider an emergency decompression on the way to the surface. So NDL, non-decompression limit. By diving with enriched air nitrox, we are increasing the oxygen content in our cylinder, and therefore we're decreasing the nitrogen content in our cylinder. What that means is, for any given depth, we are absorbing less nitrogen at that depth. What it really means, long term, is it increases our non-decompression limit. And that's one of the biggest benefits to diving nitrox. It allows us to be underwater longer without violating our non-decompression limit. So, let's do an example. We're going to do a 50-foot dive. We're gonna use air, 21%, enriched air nitrox, 32, 32% oxygen, and enriched air nitrox, 36, or 36% oxygen. And so if we look at air on our recreational dive planner here, if we do a 50 foot dive, what is the last number down here? And our, our greatest non-decompression limit is 80 minutes. So we could theoretically stay, as long as we don't run out of gas, at 50 feet for 80 minutes with air. So I don't mean to scare you guys any further with recreational dive planners, but every variety of nitrox has its own recreational dive planner. So this dive planner, which is a nice yellow color, is specific to enriched air nitrox 32. So on my dive planner, I can look at, if I made a 50 foot dive, what is my non-decompression limit? And it is 100 and 55 minutes, over two and a half hours. Now, we have to be sensible here. Um, are, are we really going to make our gas last two and a half hours while we're underwater? Uh, probably not, so you're always going to look at your gauges and make sure that you have enough gas to get back to the surface. But over almost double the amount of time, by increasing your oxygen percentage and decreasing the nitrogen within the tank at enriched air nitrox 32. And lastly, enriched air nitrox 36. It also has its own dive planner. So if we look at a 50 foot dive, I can get 220 minutes of non-decompression time by simply increasing the oxygen percentage by 4% and decreasing my nitrogen by 4%. So pretty remarkable what happens to non-decompression limits with enriched air nitrox. So you guys might be saying to yourself, wow, this sounds phenomenal, less nitrogen, more bottom time, less time out of the water with surface intervals. Well, why don't we just fill our entire tank up with oxygen and just eliminate the nitrogen altogether? For several reasons. One, we know that with increasing percentage or concentration or partial pressure, there's that word again, of oxygen, beyond a certain limit, it becomes toxic to us as human beings. Two main forms of toxicity that we'll see, CNS, which affects brain, nervous system, or pulmonary, affecting the lungs. With CNS, we'll get to that in just a few minutes. We'll talk about what are some of the symptoms 
that we could experience with oxygen toxicity to our nervous system. With pulmonary, that tends to be in terms of prolonged exposure to that concentration of oxygen. As recreational divers, we're generally not going to run into that problem. Technical divers, rebreather divers who may be under the water for hours at a time, that cumulative effect could have an effect upon them. If we know that oxygen is toxic to us beyond a certain limit, then it behooves us, if we're going to uh, dive with nitrox, to figure out, okay, what are those limits and how do I calculate that at any particular point in time during my dive? On our next episode, we are going to take an even deeper dive, pardon the pun, into the world of nitrox diving. We're gonna define exactly what is a partial pressure of a gas. We're gonna tell you what the maximum partial pressure of oxygen that you should ever dive at and how to avoid oxygen toxicity by calculating your maximum operating depth. Click the link right below me.